it's Buddy back with another edition of the Music Universe podcast. I do thank you for listening. I am hosting solo once again. However, I do have a guest this time, and his name is Richie Kotzen. He's known for the Winery Dogs as well as his solo albums. And uh, he also did a stint back in the early 90s with Poison for their Native Tongue record, which was a phenomenal record, by the way. But uh, he's back doing some solo stuff and uh, has a new project called 50 for 50. It was released on February 3rd, his 50th birthday, and it features 50 songs he wrote and recorded and produced over the years that uh, some of them he actually just found and then finished and put them out on this project. It's available across uh, all digital and streaming outlets as well as a three disc CD collection. And uh, he chatted with me from uh, the Caribbean where he was vacationing this week. And uh, we did lose service for a moment, but we did catch back up and uh, talk about 15 minutes or so. And uh, I do appreciate him taking the time out for visiting with me. Uh, this is our second conversation. The first one was back in uh, April of 2017 when his last album, Salting Earth, was released. He was a one-man band then, and uh, you have to listen to the interview and find out if he's that again on this project. Uh, we also do briefly discuss his um, Winery Dogs band with uh, bassist Billy Sheehan whom I've spoken with in the past, and uh, drummer Mike Portnoy, who I haven't chatted with but would love the opportunity to pick his brain and chat with him here at the Music Universe. So without further ado, it's Richie Kotzen, guitarist, singer, and vocalist, talking about his 50 for 50 project right here on the Music Universe podcast. We're chatting about your 50 for 50 project. Um, first of all, uh, happy 50th birthday. I know it's a week late, but um, <clears throat> you're... You just released 50 for 50 on February 3rd, and uh, that is in celebration of your 50th. Can you just tell us a little more about the project? Sure. Um, initially, you know, I, did, I really didn't, you know, this idea of a 50-song album kind of, believe it or not, kind of came to me a little last minute um, in the sense that I was on the road I believe it must have been June, July. I was on tour with my band. We were doing a bunch of festivals, and I had brought a hard drive with me that was like a mirror image of um, my studio drive at my house. And I had probably 12 or 13 songs finished that would have been the next record. And then I started going through the archives, and and I had so much material that that I never finished. And so I thought, well, when I go home, I want to try and finish as much as I can and see where I get. And then, you know, the idea of, wow, wouldn't it be crazy if I could get 50 songs together in time for February 3rd? But I really didn't tell anybody. I just went home. I started working. And once I started developing the ideas that I found, I started writing new music as well. So I would finish a song that was something that was maybe halfway done and then out of nowhere, bang, I had an idea for a brand new song. And so before I knew it, it was like a little snowball that was going. And so over the course of about three months, um, you know, once I got to, I think it was like I had 38 songs finished and then I started talking about it. I think I put something on, on my Instagram, you know, hinting that there might be a 50 song record coming and just happened that, that I got there. You know, I mean, had, had I not gotten to the number, you know, then no one would have really known and it wouldn't have been an issue, but I was able to pull it off. The reality is there's a lot, a lot of ideas. I, I probably, you know, I could have recorded 60 songs and then you would have found me in a, in a padded room somewhere in a straitjacket. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I got there and then here, here we are. There's the record. Awesome. Well, it is your 22nd solo album. I know we chatted about three years ago when you released Salting Earth, and that was uh, April of 2017 via your own label, As Is This. Um, what's it like, I mean, besides almost, you know, being in a straight jacket, what's it like self-producing and writing and recording all this material? I mean, it, it it's not only got to be fun, but like you said, sometimes it's there's a lot of pressure. Well, you know... There's no pressure for me because I don't have, you know, if there's any pressure, it would be me putting it on myself, which I don't do. So I don't have any pressure on me, you know, because there's, you know, there's no label, there's, there's really no pressure, but what does happen is there is fatigue. And so 
you know, I would get to a point where maybe one day I just didn't feel like it. I just didn't feel like playing music. And so in those times, I, I just follow my instincts and I'll, I'll drive to the beach and hang out and reset, you know, take a few days off and just ignore, you know, the fact that I'm a musician until I feel like doing it again. And and that's kind of, you know, how I operate in general, you know, it's a, a, a balance where, you know, I'll work and then I'll take, I have long periods where I don't, I don't even look at the guitar, you know, um, and then I'll get an idea for a song and then I'll, I'll, I'll start, I'll start in again. So I think it's that kind of um, demeanor and approach that allows me to, to be able to do what I do, you know, um, it's just kind of a, a flow. And, you know, I've been working this way for so many years. Um, it's just very easy for me to get an idea and go in and record it. Oh, absolutely. And uh, Devil's Hand is the first single. Um, I did, um, I, I was sent the album, but for some reason it would not uh, open on my notebook. So I haven't been able to listen to it all, but I, I was really digging Devil's Hand. I saw the video and uh, it's like a really... Um, really cool uh, song and a really long solo. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. How, uh, can you tell us a little more about that song and maybe some other ones that you would like to um, maybe further discuss? Yeah, sure. Um, Devil's Hand, uh, you know the song, so you, you, you've seen the video. Um, the thing about it is that it was very difficult for me to figure out what I was going to lead the record with. I think that was the biggest challenge was figuring out what am I going to lead with? You know, you got a 50 song album and a lot of times people expect you to come out of the gate with something, you know, a little heavier, more aggressive. And I had just done three singles prior to releasing this record over the course of a year. I put out three singles, which were all pretty heavy rocking tunes. I mean, at least as far as uh, about as heavy as I, I get. Um, and so I, I thought, you know, well, think about a song a composition and, and the devil's hand just kind of jumped out as an obvious choice because of it's, it's just such a unique song. It's and, and for me, it's a long song. I don't have a lot of seven minute songs. Um, and it's a misleading song in the sense that, you know, you, when you first listen to it, it's, it sounds like it's a, a ballad. And then there's this transition point in the middle that kind of transitions into a bass zone, which leads into, you know, a pretty, ripping guitar solo for two minutes and i just thought that that would be an interesting thing to lead with but the, the biggest thing that caused me to decide to lead it was the video um nowadays for an artist like myself when you come with the first single you don't even talk about radio it's, the, com the conversation doesn't even come up you talk about oh well what kind of visual can you put to it what kind of video can you make and so i started listening to the song and I storyboarded the video. It's the first video that I directed totally a hundred percent from start to finish. And, uh, you know, I, I had a concept about a, a guy that kind of lost everything and was pretty much just, uh, living out of his car, you know, on PCH. And the character was having flashbacks, uh, of a happier time. And then at one point he, there's a transition where he finds himself in a public bathroom and, and just kind of cleans up and tries to get back to where he was. And then of course it leads to the guitar solo scene. And then the last shot of the video is, is him kind of waking up and you don't really know if that really happened or was it all a dream, you know, following the thread of the lyric, it was all a dream. So that was really what led me to, to go with that song was that I had a, a visual and I thought the song really has everything. It has, you know, the guitar solo, which obviously I'm known as a guitarist, but I thought compositionally uh, it was an interesting song lyrically and melodically. So that's kind of how I, I came to the decision to lead with that. Yeah, well, it was definitely a great choice. I really enjoyed, like I said, that video and very, uh, <laughs> very neat to hear how um, how that came about. And, you know, your first your first time at directing that. Um are you a uh, so on Salting Earth? You were a one man band minus some uh, backing vocals. Is it the same for this project? Yeah, I'm pretty much the only musician. I mean, there's a couple uh, things that um, are credited on the album. Uh, there's a couple songs where there are a couple other drummers, 
There's one song that is a leftover from uh, the peace sign record that I never finished. And a buddy of mine played drums on that track. I had just found it on my drive. And then there's another song that has um, another buddy of mine playing drums on it. And, uh, but beyond that, uh, it's pretty much me. There's a trumpet solo on one song. So oh, nice. all those things are credited, but, uh, yeah, 95% uh, of the record. I'm the only, I'm the only musician, the only bass player, the only singer, the only guitar player. And I play drums on most of the record. Awesome. Very versatile. Uh, I know that for sure. Um, does it, uh, is it like Christmas sometimes when you're going through your drive and you just find songs that you didn't use or maybe forgotten about? Sometimes, yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised. I mean, that happened when I was going through. I was like, oh, my God, this is so cool. Why didn't I ever release this? And there was a few songs like that. Um, there's a song on the record called I Am The Clown. And I went back and found it. I was like, man, it's really odd that I never released it because I, I know it's been sitting there for a good 10 or 12 years. So um, then, and then there were other things like little ideas that have been floating in my head. You know, like the song Mountains, for example. I've, I've had that lyric and the concept for that song for a very long time, and I was never really able to piece it together. And then suddenly it kind of clicked, and I, I kind of saw how that could work. And it's just, just different. You know, things come to you in different ways. You never know when the inspiration is going to strike. Yeah, and that's that's what's awesome, and that you can just record it and then get back to it whenever you feel up to it. Yeah, exactly. So um, you're <laughs> touring in support of the album, it looks like, uh, starting in June. Is that correct? That's right. We're starting in June in the Northeast, going to work our way down and um, go across the country, hopefully end in California, and then... Two months after that, I'm going to go to Europe in September and do a run of dates. Yeah, there's quite a few here in uh, Romania, Hungary, uh, Bulgaria, Germany. So everybody can just check out your website at richiecotson.com and they can get tickets. That's right. Um, do you do the um, VIP thing? I do. Um, and I do it a little differently than what a lot of people do. Um, I offer uh, early entrance to watch sound check oh, um nice. you know kind of a a look behind the curtain a lot of a lot of people don't really like that um i have nothing to hide i really don't <laughs> <laughs> so um if they buy the package um it depends on what's happening like one year when we did it with salting earth um if you buy the package you got a t-shirt a copy of the record uh a, a commemorative laminate like a, a pass, and then um, there was something else. Oh, yeah, there was a, sh a, a picture autograph. And then basically, so you come in early, you watch the sound check, and then I come off the stage and hang out and socialize and, you know, take pictures, and usually people have some questions that I answer. So it's not, you know, some of the meet and greets I know is it's kind of like, you know, stand here, don't say anything, and move on. Right. But mine isn't really like that it's more of a, a social element to it yeah and i think that makes it very unique too and makes you more personable and human yeah i and you know like i said I, there's nothing to really hide you know so it's kind of funny sometimes they get in there and there's a problem with sound check and it's like people are standing like, like <laughs> wow okay i see how it really is so and then other times you come through and it's like a really quick you know sound check so then i can spend more time on the floor talking to people Awesome. Awesome. Well, there, um, just to, not to change the subject too much, but will there, um, will there be any, um, perhaps, uh, winery dog dates with you guys this year? There will not be any this year. They're in the middle of an album cycle with their other band, Sons of Apollo. And I'm obviously doing what I'm doing. So there won't be anything this year. We did do, a run of dates in May last year, which was a lot of fun. And we did discuss the future of the band and, and the possibility of, of making a third record. So I think that's something that all three of us would be interested in doing. Just a matter of when, you know. Um, and for me, I think uh, 
I think the music should lead us there. I, I think it would be nice to get together a few times this year privately and, and maybe see if anybody has any ideas for any new songs. And then when we get to a point where we've got some material that's strong, then we can talk about formulating a plan to release it. Absolutely. And I'll say I've, I've got all the records and they're, you guys are like the best rock band that's come out in, I'd say a decade. Oh, that that's so sweet. Thank you. Well, um, I know uh, a lot of folks really loved that first record we did. And so I'd like to at some point get back and, and, and get into more of that. Yeah. Rock and roll. I mean, your solo stuff as well, just all pure rock and roll. And that's, that's the way I like music myself. Just pure. Right on. Um, is there anything else you would like to discuss before we wrap up? Uh, no, I'm thank you for uh, taking the time to talk to me and, uh, I hope you, uh, have a chance to check out the record and I hope you enjoy it. And, uh, that's it. Thank you. Absolutely. I, I'm a physical guy, so I will buy it on CD for ah, sure. Great. Uh, cause I like all the liner notes and I like something tangible. Yeah. Great. Well, thank God there's people like you out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know how it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you have a great time at the Caribbean, and it's great speaking with you again. All right. I'll talk to you later. All right. Take care. There you have it, folks. Richie Kotzen talking about his 50 for 50 project, available at all streaming and digital outlets now, as well as 3Disc CD at Amazon and his website. Check it out, and uh, you will not be disappointed, that's for sure. That's it for me. It's Buddy at the Music Universe Podcast. Check us out at themusicuniverse.com and all socials. Thank you for listening. Uh-huh.